Guten Tag, Kinder! Welcome to the Composer Detective, where we will investigate the lives of some of the world's influential and great orchestral composers. I am your host. I am a famous German Baroque composer. The Baroque era is a special period of music known for its thrills, thrills and extra notes so that the music sounds grand, fancy or decorated. I am known for a very famous piece of music you may have heard, especially at Christmas or Easter. I am Georg Friedrich Handel, but you may call me George Friedrich Handel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I am Handel, George Friedrich, George Friedrich Handel. Everyone stand up. Now sing with me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I am Handel, George Friedrich, George Friedrich Handel. Do you like this song? It is one of my most famous. I wrote it as part of an oratorio called The Messiah, which consisted of solos and choral pieces all based on scriptures from the Bible about Jesus the Messiah. I was so inspired by the texts of scripture that I flew through my composing in only 24 days. The first performance was in Dublin, Ireland, as a charity performance, and later it was performed at Covent Garden in London. King George II really liked this song too. He stood up while he was listening to the song because he was enjoying himself so much. And you know what everyone else must do when the king stands up. They must stand up too. So now, every time this song is played, everyone stands up out of respect to King George, whether he is there or not. So let me tell you how I got to this point. I was born in Halle, Germany in 1685, a very important year for composers, I must say. For not only was I born, but Johann Sebastian Bach, Guten Tag, and Domenico Scarlatti were also born. They are both very fine composers of the Baroque era, like me. Danke. I am known as a fine organist, and the name Bach is synonymous with being a musician since I come from a large family of musicians. I am a prolific composer of cantatas, which are big choral pieces, one for each Sunday and each holiday on the Christian calendar. I have three years' worth. I am also a composer of concertos, you know, like the Brandenburg concertos, and I also compose toccatas and fugues and inventions and oratorios and... Yeah, yeah, you composed a lot of wunderbar baroque music. Anyway, in my childhood, I grew up hearing music all over town. But as my father was a barber surgeon, you know, he cut people's hair and he performed surgery, he did not want me to study music. So I had to teach myself to play the harpsichord. My mother and my aunt smuggled a harpsichord into the attic so that I could practice. At least I think that is true. I cannot remember for sure anymore. I, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, was also a fantastic musician even as a child. When I was three, I started to learn to play violin and piano and I composed Twinkle, twinkle, little 
to start. I could replay melodies after hearing them only one time. Both of my parents were musicians, and my father, Leopold, nurtured my musical talent. I was composing concertos when I was only four, and I wrote my first opera when I was eleven. Yeah, that was in the classical period after me, but we are still talking about me. I did not write an opera when I was 11, but when I was 10, my father took me with him on a trip to visit the Duke of Weissenfels, and I found an organ in the chapel. I began to play the organ, and when the Duke heard me, he was so amazed that he convinced my father to give me music lessons. I eventually became an expert organist and harpsichordist, learned to play the violin and the oboe, and I began to compose. My father still wanted me to study law, and I studied for a short time, but then I made music my career. But my parents did not want me to be a poor musician, so they sent me to law school. Of course, I quit and went to study music at St. Petersburg Conservatory. Da, I, Igor Stravinsky, can relate to you and Tchaikovsky, in that though I wanted to study music, my parents wanted me to go to law school. Can you imagine the world if we had been lawyers instead of composers? What a dull place the world would be without our music. But after all, I made music my career. So I started to visit cities that were important music centers, like Hamburg, Germany, where I played harpsichord and violin for the Hamburg Opera Orchestra. I became friends with Johann Mattheson, a Nazareth composer, but sometimes my temper got in the way. It's kind of a funny story, really. You see, he had composed an opera, and we both wanted to play harpsichord. But I got so mad that he would not let me play the harpsichord, that we got into a duel with swords. Neither of us got hurt, and he ended up helping me write my opera, Elmira. So it all worked out in the end. <laughs> Here's another funny story. After I spent some time in Italy to learn about operas. But wait, do you know what an opera is? It is like a play with costumes and sets and the actors sing everything instead of talking. Very entertaining and challenging. You have seen my opera, Rinaldo, I am sure, yeah? No? It is a very frilly and thrilling story of the knight Rinaldo, who is seeking to take back Jerusalem from the Saracen king, Argante, during the Crusades. So anyway, back to my funny story. After I spent some time in Italy to learn more about operas, I came back to Hanover, Germany to head up the Royal Music Department for the ruler who was Georg Ludwig. But I got invited to London, England to compose operas, so I asked for a year's leave. But I ended up staying for three years and I began to write orchestral music and oratorios, which are sort of like operas with soloists and choirs, but no sets and no costumes. You'll never guess what happened. While I was still in England, my employer, Georg Ludwig, became the king of England. Yeah, King George I, in order to win back his favor after I left him without a director of music in Hanover, I composed a special piece of orchestral music for him called Water Music. During his royal procession on a barge on the Thames River in London, my orchestra and I 
played water music on a barge floating alongside him. King George liked it so much that he had us play it three times for him. We were so tired after we had played for so long. Here is a picture of us at the time. As you can see, it is not quite accurate because I am in the center of the picture on the same barge as King George. This was in 1717. By 1727, I became a naturalized citizen of England. That is why I speak English so well. Yeah, the English people loved me. And though unusual for a living person, they erected a statue of me in Vauxhall Gardens. But opera was losing its popularity, and so I began to write oratorios. They are a little more simple, and I began to write them in English instead of Italian, for this is what the English people wanted. My oratorios were usually Bible stories, such as Esther, Saul, and Israel in Egypt. Then, in 1741, I had the opportunity to write the Messiah oratorio. And the rest is history. Later, I also composed music for the Royal Fireworks. Today, you can visit my grave in Westminster Abbey in London. Ephesians 5 says, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you like to sing or write music. Do it for the glory of God like me. Perhaps you will be the next great composer. Wunderbar! Now let's review about me. My name is George Friedrich Handel. Repeat it after me. George Friedrich Handel. George Friedrich Handel. 1685 to 1759. 1685 to 1759. German Baroque composer who lived most of his life in England. German Baroque composer who lived most of his life in England. Known for water music. Known for water music. Operas and oratorios like the Messiah. Operas and oratorios like the Messiah. Danke. Thank you for joining me on The Composer Detective today. I hope you enjoyed learning about me, George Friedrich Handel. Please join me again another time to learn about other great composers. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Auf Wiedersehen from George Friedrich Handel and The Composer Detective.